What's up, you guys? I'm back for commentary on the third episode of The Idol. So if you haven't seen the first two episodes, your viewing experience could be improved if you watched those. You don't have to, but they could be. Anyways, I've been summoned to watch episode three. And the one thing that I really do look forward to each week when I watch these is that there's like a new meme that happens. Like last week, this was the meme. <laughs> this week, this scene is the meme. You know what I think it is? I think you're gay. I ain't gay. But man, I do not know if it was worth it this week because this was the worst episode of The Idol so far. And honestly, one of the worst episodes of television I've ever seen in my whole life. And I've seen every episode of Victorious, so that's saying a lot. Do you have Batman's phone number? <laughs> no. Then how are we gonna call Batman? Anyways, let's get into it. This episode begins with Tedros taking Jocelyn shopping. Let's go shopping. Lay is their chauffeur, and meanwhile in the backseat, Jocelyn and Tedros are just like munching on each other's bazongos and bazingos, like like it's nobody's business, like if she's not even there. He even just straight up starts eating her huh? he just like full <gasps> course meal right there. And which, by the way, he's not really in the right location to be eating the box. Like, he's kind of at her belly button in this scene. Okay, but to make matters worse, we're graced with another song by The weekend as this is going on that completely explains, again, what's happening in the show. I'm a lesser man, a lesser man, a lesser man than you think I am. <laughs> he is a lesser man than she thinks he is. You're a genius, dude. So Jocelyn tries on a bunch of clothes at this clothing store. And at first it's going really well. Tedros is going like, arr, 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 arr. like I want to like rip it off of you. It's so fucking sexy. I just want to fucking tear this right off. <laughs> but then he starts getting really mad because he thinks that an employee who's just doing his job is like staring at Jocelyn. And so he gets all riled up. He gets all riled up. He gets in his face. I'll fucking curb stomp you. I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not sure what you were interpreting, but let me see I wasn't it. doing anything. Let me see it's it. It's very intimidating. Let me catch you looking at her again. Let me catch you looking at her again. I mean, I don't want to shit on the short kings right now. I really don't. But he is literally at the height of this guy's ear. It's very much giving like, you want to fight Twinkle Toes? Meanwhile, Lei calls Haim because she's concerned. She tells him Tedros is taking over the house. And that's when we get a flashback to what happened earlier on in the week. He's taking control of the house, like, mentally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm working with Jocelyn. Money's on an issue. And in this flashback, Tedros is basically just bullying Lei and asking her when he can get some, like, equipment set up. Where should he, uh, set up? I will talk to Jocelyn about it. Hmm. I know it might be hard for you to, to digest this right now, but I'm running the show. Okay. Um, sure, but I... Still have to talk to Jocelyn. <laughs> but anyways, then he starts calling her the Arsler and it keeps going downhill from there. Leia. Are you fuck? What did I just say? Tedros fires a member of Jocelyn's staff named Andreas, who I think is her personal chef, I think. In episode two, he handed her food and then he's also here in the kitchen with the rag, so I'm just assuming. Anyways, this whole thing goes topsy-turvy when he asks her- How the probiotics working? So good, look. Because he starts touching her like all willy-nilly. Oh, you look amazing. <laughs> so much better. Wow. Right? Your body's just- it is honestly really weird. You don't understand. <clears throat> He's a- Boundaries. My family are doctors. But Tedros takes it to a whole new level because he goes over there and just smacks the shit out of him. Oh. <gasps> and then forces Jocelyn to fire him. Get the fuck out of here. Sorry, but I only take orders from my boss. Who? Her? Right there? Andres, I'm really sorry. I just don't- I don't know if this is the right fit anymore. 
I really think that this scene could have been tons more effective if we actually cared about her relationship to this guy. Like it doesn't really feel like she's stepping on a longtime friend or supporter because as far as I know, we really don't know him. And also he's kind of creepy as fuck. Oh. You look amazing. <laughs> like, I'm almost like, damn, yeah, she should fire him. Not because of Tedros's influence, but because he's kind of weird. Oh. Another one of those things that annoys me about this scene, besides the obvious, is that, hey, Sam Levinson, hey, weekend. Did you guys, um, know that women do know when they're getting groped? Jocelyn's reaction to this is just so, like, <sighs> Men are drooling over the paper as they are writing this down. She's like, his family are doctors. <laughs> are you a doctor? No, I'm not, but my, my sister and my father, they're both gastrointestinal doctors. Girl, he still shouldn't be stroking your dick, putting lotion on your dick. Anyways, Haim calls this other guy who's been in the last two episodes, but very briefly. He's another manager at her label or something. But the important thing here is that he wants to cancel Jocelyn's tour. And he says it in like the most vulgar way possible. Right now she's making me have IBS. I'm fucking shitting more blood than a kid at Epstein's Island. Ha, uh, ha? Huh? And before somebody goes off on me in the comments and is like, it's satire, they're like exaggerating the character of some asshole from Hollywood. To that person, first of all, you have a booger in your nose. Secondly, just because it's satire, doesn't mean that it's automatically gonna be funny. But this is when we cut back to the clothing store with Tedros and Jocelyn, and he starts telling her that she has no fashion sense. I have taste. <laughs> I know like when I was younger, but like now, you don't think I have taste? Mm. No, really, no. And this is when we get that gem of a zinger from Lily Rose Depp. You know what I think it is? I think you're gay. I ain't gay. Even though you said that sounded really gay. This is like a TikTok sound just like waiting to happen. But unfortunately, this leads to a very long, loud, and awkward sex scene in the dressing room. Uh. I guess Tedros was like hella triggered by being huh? called gay. So now he's like, I'm not gay. Would a gay guy do this? <laughs> and I don't know what Grinder is. How might I download that though? Just to like make fun of it. Okay, seriously though, and a little bit of a trigger warning. The worst part of this scene is that he tries to borderline like stealth her. She says don't and he keeps saying that he's gonna finish in her multiple times and then when she finally pushes him away he's like super offended by that. What? You came inside me. fucking hurt. Sorry. What's wrong with you? You came inside me. Let's bend my fucking dick. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. Figure it out. My first thought when I saw this was, why did the men who wrote her think her reaction would be like that? And my second thought was, if they've been having so much sex, how has this conversation not happened at all by now? <laughs> Jocelyn sits back down in the waiting area, and you can hear Tedros still in the dressing room, jerking his shit, putting lotion on his shit. And I wasn't sure if him groaning and making loud noises of pleasure, like a cat that just started eating a cheeseburger was intentionally supposed to be funny but it was Hi. tedros ends up wiping his on some of the designer dresses that were left in the stall and they head back home when they arrive haim and his partner destiny are both there to confront him what are you guys doing here i can't just come by to say hello to you you can, it's just usually you want to talk to me about something. They start talking about the remix that Tedros and Jocelyn made in the last episode. That sounds like this, by the way. Something sweet, think it's time to and they hype him up as a way to like start being able to interrogate him about who he is. He just knows so much about music. It's kind of incredible. I mean, it's, it's almost unbelievable. Tedros says that he's from LA and that he grew up in Hollywood, but as soon as Destiny starts inquiring for more information, he starts hella beating around the bush. You grew up in Hollywood? Yeah. Wow, me too. No shit. <laughs> yes, born and raised. Wow, what school did you go to? I, uh, I wasn't the best student, unfortunately. I'm a little embarrassed. Oh, you got kicked out of school? Yeah. 
So what school? I was honestly surprised when he didn't look around and say, I went to a uh, table pu el hai. Tedros says that he's gonna bring Mike Dean into the picture as a co-producer. And if you don't know who Mike Dean is, he's a famous producer slash songwriter that has worked with some of the most famous people ever. And they all come to this agreement that they're gonna record three songs in two weeks. Three songs in two weeks. Yeah? Hits. Not songs, hits. hits. Undeniable. Undeniable. I think this is like the worst plan imaginable. Like instead of releasing two versions of your new single, you're choosing to make three brand new ones in two weeks? That's like me going from releasing one video a week to three a week. Call it a mid-off. None of them are gonna come out good realistically. But what shocked me most about this conversation is that when Haim and Destiny leave, they say this about Tedros. I fucking love that guy. It's amazing. But when they get in the car, they say, I think our girl's in trouble. My grandmother said you never trust a dude but a rat tail. And I thought they would have more of a conversation about like finding out who he is and what they should do about this situation. Or maybe even supervise the house a little bit more. But no, they're just like, fuck, I love that guy. Also, she's in trouble. Dang, that sucks for her. I sure hope nothing happens. Immediately after they leave, Tedro starts eating her. And again, right next to Lei, who is like, bro. <laughs> We fade into a new shot of her and Tedros hanging out together, but you can still hear Jocelyn moaning in the mix. <laughs> We also briefly see Jenny performing in Jocelyn's costume that she was wearing last episode and replacing her in her own music video. And if you're wondering at all if this episode expands on that plot twist or goes more into detail on what's going on with that, no. All, that's all you get is this dialogueless scene of her replacing her in the music video. That's all. Jocelyn has a conversation about her mom with this character named Chloe, who in the previous episode, jumped into the pool naked and also kind of acted like a baby. I've never been to a place so big. It's this like beautifully, can you not step on my keyboard? <laughs> oh my God, you're fat. But it's like this beautifully shot scene and Jocelyn talks about her struggle with not being able to get vulnerable with her lyrics and about some trauma that she's experienced like holding her mom's hand as she died. Was it really hard when she, when she died? Yeah, sorry. She was really sick for a long time and I was holding her hand when she... Mm -hmm. Closed her eyes. In between this conversation, we see shots of Jocelyn brushing Chloe's hair. Gosh, I really hope that hairbrush isn't gonna enter the conversation again later. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tedros is talking to Troy Sivan's character, Xander. He's barely been involved in the last two episodes at all, but apparently he's Jocelyn's creative director and he hates his job. Creative direction fucking sucks with Jocelyn. I don't disagree. You don't disagree? You're the fucking creative director. What do you mean you don't disagree? The weekend mispronounces carte blanche. All right, let's say you had carte blanche, right? And Xander gives us this amazing, awesome idea. I would take that photo with the fucking on her face and I'd make it her album cover. You're fucking smart. Hey, you know that picture of my friend that got posted against her own will of her with the cum on her face? I think that'd be cool if we put that on an album cover. I mean, she's not around right now, but I'm sure she would be really cool with it. Isaac is trying to record a song while the rest of the cult is spread out amongst the room. They're just lounging with their balls out. And he asked Jocelyn if she would want to sing on the next track with him. I think I just fell in love with you. Sing with me on this next one then. To which she says no. No. <gasps> no. Which elicits a shock out of everyone. If Tedros heard you say that, you'd be in huge trouble. You're not allowed to say no. You're not allowed to say no. Because by saying no, you're denying yourself an experience. <sighs> because by saying no, you're denying yourself an experience. This leads to a very uncomfortable conversation where Jocelyn tries to explain that not every experience is good, but they're like, um, well, actually, hypothetically, if you were to suffer tremendously, you might make a really good song, maybe, actually. Chloe uses All My Love, which was written by Robert Plant, 
about his dead son as an example of an experience of suffering that is worth it quote unquote okay robert plant had a son who died when he was five years old and he wrote all my love after that and it's one of the most beautiful songs ever written yeah but i think if robert plant had a say in it he would have chosen his son's life and that'd be a pretty big loss for the world. The point they're trying to make and why you should say yes to everything is not even really worth acknowledging, to be honest, because it's just so far removed from the realm of a reality. And I actually semi-respect this conversation because it is maybe a more honest portrayal of a cult. It seems like some cult shit, but Jocelyn tries to have a rebuttal to this non-conversation. So you think that by losing his son, he was able to write something that saved a lot of people's lives. And because of that, you'll say yes to anything anyone asks you to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a suggestion for this show, and I know it's too late for them to make this actually good. And even if it wasn't too late, I would be shoved aside because of my female perspective. But instead of trying to shove in a bunch of these cult members now, it would have been cool if we had a dedicated episode for each one of them, or at least the ones that are very integral to the story. Kind of like how Euphoria has character-based episodes, and each episode would still be featured featuring Jocelyn and showing moments of her life before she meets Tedros. That would have given us more time to get to know everybody and especially Jocelyn who presently has suffering as her personality. Suffering is her personality. It's her astrological sign. It's her Chinese zodiac animal. It is everything. The reality of the situation right now though is I don't give a fuck about any of these cult members and how could I? Most of the show is spent on copious amounts of sex and nudity of Lily Rose Depp. Not to mention some of the stuff that's gonna happen later in this episode, which is a whole lot of- <laughs> A whole lot of hoopla! Hoopla! <laughs> Later on in the night, the whole cult, Lay, Xander, Jocelyn, everybody, sits down and they have a dinner together. And after a few drinks, Tedros prods Xander to tell her his idea about her album cover. I was thinking, if your lovely label is so fucking obsessed with making you a bad girl, we should take the photo with the mm -hmm. on your face. Mm -hmm and we should um, make it your album cover. To which Lei understandably objects to immediately. No, Why? absolutely not. And Jocelyn gets really defensive over this for some reason. Yeah, okay, but it's different if you like embrace it. So what, it's only okay if the internet like uses it against me? Preach. No, the internet is on your side. No. This is when the writers start rearing their ugly, tiny little heads again. Because Lay says that everyone's on her side, that people are writing beautiful pieces in defense of her. But Jocelyn says that there's no difference between the people who are defending her or harassing her. But they all wrote beautiful pieces <laughs> defending you and your right to grow up and have a sex life. There is no difference between the people making fun of me and the people supporting me. They're all capitalizing off of it and they're just driving more people to look it up. That's exactly why you should make your album cover. Which I don't think that's true at all. I, actually, I would say there's a huge difference between people who harass others and defend them. Even if they are both capitalizing on it, I definitely do think there's a difference because without a voice of reason, people will continue unashamedly being the worst human beings imaginable. <laughs> Real life example, incoming trigger warning. When the whole thing happened with Chris Brown and Rihanna, a lot of people were quick to make fun of her for some reason and also even blame her for that situation. But there was tons of articles also written in her defense and offering resources for people that were suffering from domestic violence. And not only that, I think those articles were very validating for people who have been in that situation. I don't think all of that is worthless simply because people are getting paid to do it. That's sort of like saying every YouTube 
video ever is worthless because people are trying to get paid to do it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Does this make sense? People put passion into their work, especially when it comes to things that include their morals in them. Anyways though, Jocelyn then pivots and says that she doesn't really want to use that picture because it's humiliating and it makes her feel really bad. Because it's it's actually humiliating and like makes me feel really bad about myself. Why? <laughs> because I it just like I want to be it just sucks. It's it actually sucks. Sam Levy and The Weekday are so struggling to keep their shitty opinions like down. They're like, wait, wait, wait. We 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 do have to have her object to this actually. That's when Tedros really doubles down on being annoying. And if you've ever been in any sort of relationship or discussion with somebody who is a narcissist, you might just start falling to your knees and punching the air from this conversation. I I want to be taken seriously. Why? Because I do. <laughs> but why? Because I want to have a career that lasts and is meaningful and, and isn't like a fucking joke. And shockingly, even after expressing she does not want to do this, her friend Xander keeps trying to convince her to do it. And this is when Jocelyn actually does stand up for herself for like a second. Why are you talking to me like I'm like new to the music industry? I'm not you are. Tedros then starts pressuring her into detailing trauma that she suffered from her mom. Jocelyn, I don't keep secrets from anyone at this table. Well, that's, that's your prerogative. I'm not gonna let you keep secrets either. She describes her hitting her with a hairbrush as a form of motivation. Um, she did a lot of things, a lot of things. Um, her, her favorite was probably hitting me with a hairbrush. Hitting you where? My butt, my eyes, my stomach, my back, like just anywhere people wouldn't notice. But this is when the absolute worst part of the show happens. And the reason why I'm calling this one of the worst episodes of television I've ever seen in my life. Domestic abuse survivors, let's ride like the fucking wind right now, dude. Quite frankly, we're braver than the US Marines for finishing this episode right now, dude. Tedros asks if she thinks she's stuck because her mom isn't around anymore. Is there a part of you that wonders if the reason you're stuck is because your mother's not around? Yeah, absolutely. He then asks her if she misses it. So you, you miss it? Getting hit? The motivation it gave you. And then she says this. Sometimes. If you loved the music you were making, would you have felt like it was worth it? hot is it getting uncomfortable in here. Tedros tells Leia to go to bed. Basically just tells her to go to bed. Leia, you look tired. Isaac, you should take her to bed. Okay. Once she leaves, Tedro says this. You still got that hairbrush? You still get that hairbrush? You still get that hairbrush? I want to squish Sam Levinson and The Weeknd on the bottom of my shoe like Plankton and Spongebob. I can't, I fucking can't, dude. And by the way, I'm not even kidding or I'm not exaggerating this in any way. Her getting beaten with a hairbrush gets hyped up to a Weeknd song for a full like two minutes before it actually happens. While again, the, the song is mansplaining what's going on. Mm -hmm. I've been manipulated a hundred times, but none of them felt so soft and kind. And it goes on for so long that if you were watching this out of context, you would think that she was about to be bestowed knighthood or something. But while this happens, the whole cult is watching, which, okay, yeah, that makes sense. The whole cult's brainwashed, right? But Xander's also there? He just got here. He's not brainwashed. What the fuck? Why is he just there? And then it goes to just like straight abuse to the tempo of the weekend song. She's getting beaten. They're taking a bath together. She's getting beaten. They're taking a bath together. That's basically it. It for I don't I don't even know it felt like it got it went on for like damn damn near a fucking uh, Oppenheimer length dude and the episode just ends with Jocelyn thanking Tedros for taking care of her and that's it thank you for taking care that, that that whole last scene with the dinner talk and the the beating was 
quite literally half the episode. I can't even think of a worse way to manage time than this show has done. Like, I have fucking ADHD and I manage my life better than this shit, dude. I got nothing more to say about this one. To those of you out there who want me to watch episode four, I will watch episode four for you. Give me a like if you feel bad for me, cause what the fuck? <laughs> And uh, thank you very much. I will see you again very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>